Assalamu alaikum. This video is about the nephrolithiasis, also called as the kidney stones or the renal calculi. The nephrolithiasis means the presence of the stones or the calculi inside the kidneys, and urolithiasis means the presence of stones or calculi inside the urinary tract, like the ureters, the urinary bladder, or the urethra. What actually kidney stones are? These are actually the hard and insoluble and crystallized minerals that have formed out of the filtrate which is produced with the help of nephrons. Now the nephrons are the structural and functional units of the kidneys and it is with the help of these uh, nephrons that the urine is formed by removing the excess of uh, water, the excess of uh, minerals and salts and other waste materials from the blood. But when the salts and minerals are present in excess amounts in the urine, they may get crystallized and form the kidney stones. Some facts about the kidney stones. The kidney stones may vary in size. Uh, they may range from, uh, they may be as small as a grain of the salt or may be as large as a walnut. Most of the stones are formed in the kidneys and from the kidneys, they can migrate to other parts of the urinary system like the ureter, urethra or the urinary bladder and they may grow there and stuck there and impede the uh, flow of the urine and uh, the urinary uh, the kidney stones may be found anywhere in the uh, urinary system like they may be found inside the kidneys they may be found inside the ureters or the bladder and most of the stones uh, can pass through easily uh, through the urinary tract especially the stones which are less than 5 mm in diameter but whenever a stone moves inside the urinary system it causes severe pain to the patient and uh, the larger stones uh, which are greater than 5 mm in diameter require some sort of uh, procedures for their removal now the types of the stones the first is the calcium oxalate type and this type of stones is formed in the acidic urine due to the high levels of calcium oxalate in the urine and the causes include hyperparathyroidism in this condition in the hyperparathyroidism there is excess removal of the calcium from the bones and the uh, level of the calcium increases uh, in the uh, blood which increases the level of calcium in the urine and increases the chances of the uh, stone formation also the sodium intake uh, excessive sodium intake uh, prevents the uh, reabsorption of the calcium and increases the concentration of calcium inside the urine and also increases the chances of getting the kidney stones excessive oxalates gi disorders which can interfere with the uh, absorption of the minerals like the calcium and others and excess intake of calcium or vitamin d the second is the uric acid type and uh, these types of stones are formed in uh, in the patients in which there is uh, too much of uric acid in their urine like the patients uh, having gout or the dehydrated patients the patients suffering from diabetes or uh, the uh, persons having high intake of purine foods the next type is the cysteine type and uh, these are formed when there is too much of amino acid called the cysteine in the urine. The PCT that is the proximal convoluted tubule part of the nephron is responsible for the 100% reabsorption of the amino acids from the uh, glomerular filtrate. But when this doesn't happen, the concentration of amino acids, especially the cysteine, increases in the urine and uh, this predisposes the patient to the formation of the cysteine, cysteine type of uh, kidney stones. The next is the strew white type of uh, kidney stones and which are uh, really rare and these are formed in the patients suffering from chronic urinary tract infections with alkaline urine and these are composed of magnesium ammonium phosphate. The next is the calcium phosphate type of uh, kidney stones and these are also formed in the alkaline urine and in patients with renal tubule issues. Now the causes. Uh, to remember the causes we have to look at the word crystal because this will really help us to remember all these causes. The first is the consuming of uh, foods high in oxalates, purines, salts and medications with calcium oxalate. 
because this really increases the concentration of these substances inside the blood and inside the urine which predisposes a patient and uh, to the formation of uh, kidney stones and uh, in uh, due to this uh, the main type of stones which are formed include the calcium and uric acid type of stones the second include the recurrent urinary tract infections and uh, due to this this true white type of stones are formed the next include the hypercalciuria which is the excessive concentration of the calcium inside the urine hyperparathyroidism hypercitraturia the citrate helps uh, uh, the citrate inhibits the calcium salt crystallization but in case of hypocitraturia uh, hypo the calcium salt crystallization uh, takes place and the uh, kidney stones may get formed and, uh, and in, due, to, due to this the calcium oxalate type of stones are formed inside the kidneys the next to include the structural blockage or the stasis of urine uh, this occurs in the patient suffering from prostate problems or having strictures too much uric acid uh, this uh, is found in the patient suffering from gout or the individuals having high intake of the purines absorption problems including uh, gastrointestinal problems uh, like the ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease which interfere the, with the absorption of the calcium and other salts and uh, increase the risk of uh, getting the kidney stones low mobility because low mo mobility makes the urine stagnant in the kidneys and uh, it uh, increases the chances of uh, the salts to get uh, to get crystallized and form the kidney stones the pathophysiology we already discussed the types of uh, the causes of the kidney stones and these uh, causes uh, can cause the hypercalcemia excessive concentration of the calcium inside the blood and high serum uric acid and combined with the urinary stasis these can lead to supersaturated urine with excess of calcium oxalates and uric acid and uh, the precipitation and crystallization of these minerals may occur and lead to the stone formation and these stones may obstruct the pelvic outlet ureter or the bladder neck and uh, can lead to the flank pain fever chills dysuria which is difficult to urinating hematuria uh, presence of blood in the urine nausea and vomiting what are the clinical manifestations present in the patients with uh, kidney stones the first and uh, major uh, clinical manifestation is the pain which is really intense deep and aching the second is the hematuria that is the presence of the blood inside the urine nausea and vomiting which may be caused due to the intense pain urinary retention it occurs when the stones uh, block the bladder neck or some other part of the urinary system and uh, impede the flow of the urine fever or cloudy urine now the diagnosis first we may uh, ask the patient for KUB which is actually an x-ray K stands for kidney U for ureter and V for bladder it is actually an x-ray of kidneys ureters and the bladder the second includes the IVP intravenous pilogram it uh, includes uh, the administration of iodine based diet to the patient and then taking the x-rays uh, we can also uh, ask the patient for USG or the CT scan and uh, urine, uh, urine analysis which can find out uh, the, uh, the levels of various electrolytes minerals and uh, the pH of the urine the, now the medical management first the, to relieve the pain opioid or the non-steroidal anti-inflammatory uh, analgesic agents may be given to the patient the NSAIDs have uh, extra benefit because they relieve the uh, uh, inflammation and may really help in the removal of the stones increasing fluid intake to three to four liters per day because it uh, helps the urine in getting diluted and prevents the formation of further, uh, further formation of the stones and it, it also increases the hydrostatic pressure behind the stones and may help in the removal of the stones limiting the calcium and vitamin D supplements uh, especially in uh, patients having calcium stones 
uh, low purine diet or giving the patient allopurinol to reduce the serum uh, uric acid levels uh, especially in the patients having the uric acid stones and low protein diet in case of the cysteine stones the interventional procedures first is the extracorporeal shock wave lithotripsy also called as the ESWL it is a non-invasive procedure in which the ultrasound shock waves are directed towards the stones present in the kidneys and these stones get uh, broken down into the smaller pieces which can then easily pass through the urinary system and can be removed easily the next includes the percutaneous uh, nephrolithotomy it is an invasive procedure it uh, and in, it involves giving an incision in the back of the patient uh, where the kidneys are located and uh, introducing a nephroscope through which the stones are then removed the next is the ureteroscopy it, uh, uh, it no incision is required in this method instead a scope is inserted through the urethra to the kidneys to remove the stones using the laser method or the lithotripsy method now the nursing management first we have to uh, relieve the pain of the patient because the patient is suffering from a phase of intense pain so we have to administer the prescribed analgesics including the opioids or the NSAIDs and uh, encourage the patient to, to increase the fluid intake uh, to at least three to four liters per day as we already mentioned the benefits of increasing the fluid intake and monitor the input and output because uh, the patient may uh, the patient's urinary system may be blocked by the stones and uh, we may get a clue by monitoring the input and output about the uh, retention of the urine monitor patient for uti because the patient having kidney stones is at a greater risk for developing urinary tract infections and finally to finally we have to educate the pa patient that the stones can reoccur and uh, um, advise the patient to stay uh, hydrated to make the urine uh, diluted and uh, the, to prevent the crystallization of the uh, minerals and the salts thank you that was all about the kidney stones